what you need to know about force plates for the vertical jump. I've seen a lot of jump coaches display force plates and graphs during their videos. Often coaches flaunt graphs and numbers for theatrical effects. Wow, science! But what is actually important? I wanna go over a few basic things about force plates, starting with, well, what is it? Think of force plates as a bathroom scale, a very expensive bathroom scale. This expensive, sophisticated scale can precisely measure fluctuations in weight or force on tiny time scales, often measuring a thousand times per second. When we look at the graph, we can divide it into several phases. First, there's the weighing phase. This is the quiet period where the athlete stands still so we can measure their body weight. Next is the unweighting phase. This begins at the onset of movement when the athlete descends by flexing their lower limbs. The phase extends until force is equal to the athlete's body weight. This end point coincides with maximum negative or downward velocity. The breaking phase begins as the athlete nears the bottom of the squatting movement. The athlete is braking or decelerating during their descent en route to moving back upward. It's sometimes referred to as the eccentric phase, describing the theoretical muscle action during this time frame. The phase ends at the bottom point of their squatting movement. The propulsion phase begins when the athlete's center of mass begins moving upward and it continues until takeoff. The flight phase spans from takeoff to touchdown. There's no weight on the force plate, so it reads zero. The last phase is the landing phase. At touchdown, the athlete generates force to slow down their velocity by bending their lower limbs. This phase ends at the bottom of the squat where the center of mass velocity is zero. There are lots of ways we can use the information from a force plate, including how to very accurately calculate our jump height. We do this by combining a few of the phases to get relative net vertical impulse. And then using Newton's laws, we can calculate velocity and displacement. We can also look at power, rate of force development, and a whole host of other variables from the force plates. These can ultimately help us identify areas beneficial for measuring the effects of our training and also helping us design strategies for improvement.